Welcome everybody uh, to tonight's class on New Year's health tips and also recovering from holiday celebrations. My name is John Immel and I'm the director and founder of Joyful Belly Ayurveda. And uh, tonight's call is sponsored by the Mastering Ayurveda Digestion and Nutrition course, which is our uh, one year 500 hour certification course. Uh, we have two certification courses at Joyful Belly. Um, and uh, tonight's call, as I said, is sponsored by the Digestion and Nutrition course. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let me uh, get, get started here. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about recovering from holiday ce uh, celebrations. You know, I, I, this is probably a, a familiar story. It may even happen to you every year. Rich holiday foods, nourishing uh, and decadent meals and sweets and overeating or maybe eating until late at night. Uh, it's all wonderful to enjoy that festive atmosphere with friends or family. And, uh, and the, 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 the weather of the season, everything seems to encourage that kind of rich, heavier foods. At least if you're living in the Northern Hemisphere uh, this time of year, I know we probably have a few folks on the call from the Southern Hemisphere. And I think you, uh, you guys will, um, for this, first half of the presentation, you'll learn a lot of things that you'll be applying in six months from now and uh, instead of today. And some of it will, uh, will be relevant today as well. And, uh, and also, I think you'll enjoy uh, some of the insights, even if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Anyway, uh, people this time of year, they're traveling, they were preparing for the holidays, maybe eating some meals on the go, a little bit of stress, trying to figure out um, how to... Uh, Make it all happen, right? And I think that's, uh, that's a familiar situation. Uh, so, you know, Ayurveda says, sure, go out, have some fun. You know, celebrate. Uh, Ayurveda is the art of living. It's not the art of fasting. It's not the art of, of um, you know, restriction. It's none of those things. Ayurveda li literally means the art of living uh, or the study of living. Uh, Ayur means life. And so it's nice to have all this fun, uh, but we need to know how to have fun, right? We need to know how to live it up and not feel, feel terrible afterwards. And so Ayurveda shows us lots of tricks along the way during this season, but it also shows us how to recover afterwards. Uh, now we, uh, my family, uh, just returned from our holiday uh, yesterday and, uh, and we had about a, 10 hour drive yesterday and certainly feeling it a little bit last night. And I'm so glad that, you know, we did some traveling and saw some family and some friends and did all that celebrating. But even today for myself, I was doing the Ayurveda recovery diet. And, uh, and even during the whole entire trip, I was um, taking what those opportunities along the way to stay healthy without, um, without really, with, while still celebrating, while still enjoying, while, you know, and figuring out that way to do it. And that's, you know, that's not Ayurveda 101. Sometimes that's Ayurveda 202. It's, you know, you have to know the rules before you know how to uh, adjust and, and break them in the, in the situation. And, uh, but we're going to talk a, a little bit about that tonight and some specific things uh, that, uh, that, are, that are going on. So what are the imbalances that people often feel uh, during the season, this time of year? Well, first of all, kapha dosha is likely out of balance. And for those of you who have some experience with Ayurveda, you, you know that kapha dosha is the dosha of excess, right? It's the one that has excess fluids, excess sweetness in the blood. Um, and, uh, and so uh, that gets aggravated by the excesses of the season. And uh, well, I got one student asked me a question here in the, in the chat box. Okay, good. Um, I just answered that. All right. So, uh, Cappadocia is likely imbalanced and uh, excess heaviness, dullness, slowness in the constitution, a bit of coldness uh, maybe in your constitution, excess oily qualities. Those are all some of the qualities that, in the body that get out of balance. And of course, let's not forget sweet taste. But what are the actual symptoms of that? Uh, your pants may be tight, right? You may put on a little weight. And is it fat, really? Or is it water retention? 
uh, skin may be a little puffy. That's definitely uh, water retention. That's really typical for kapha individuals, people with that kapha body type. Uh, you can have some excess mucus uh, in congestion this time of year or stagnation. Stagnation can show up in many parts of the body. Stagnation in the digestive tract means the food is, um, you know, backing up and not really digesting well. Stagnation in circulation can cause that puffy skin and, um, and water retention. Uh, so stagnation can come, in, and there could be stagnation in the lungs, right? That's congestion in the sinuses, uh, respiratory tract in general. And stagnation can also be just feeling really sleepy and tired this time of year. So Kafa folks will identify with that and may feel some of those uh, signs and symptoms. If you, uh, if you have a cold, uh, there's a great honey and spice throat coat uh, recipe on Joyful Belly. Uh, there uh, was actually some problems on the Joyful Belly website today. I don't know if it's up yet, uh, but they had some hardware issues on the server. So you might not be able to see that now, but just write that down and you can check it out. Uh, should be uh, hopefully up within a few hours or at least by the morning. Uh, so a honey and spice throat coat recipe on Joyful Belly. It's a great uh, a recipe to help if, you're, if you've got a lingering, lingering cold and to purge that. Um, I went to uh, a, a, a little social gathering uh, just uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, and just about everyone I spoke to, their family was sick over the holidays. And uh, so for some reason this year, at least in my corner of the world, in the southeast of the United States, I live in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, there were there was just a flu wave, some stomach bugs, even some strep, and other things that people had suffered from in the last two weeks. I don't know if that's true in your locale as well, uh, but you can check out that honey and spice throat coat if you are congested and you find that you're having trouble breathing through the nose and your mouth breathing. Definitely make sure you have a humidifier around you during the day and the night to ease um, uh, the stress on your lungs from mouth breathing. Mouth breathing really irritates the lungs and you don't want your cold to descend into the chest. So if you wanna prevent that cold from descending into the chest, um, one way to, to help that is to keep the air uh, more humid. The lungs, uh, in fact, when you breathe through your nose, that's one of the things your nose does is humidifies the air before it reaches the lungs and that greatly reduces stress on the lungs. So very important uh, if you have that seasonal cold or, uh, or even a, a head cold and you wanna prevent it from descending into the lungs. Uh, some people are even saying they're constipated. A lot of those tr sweet treats uh, have sugar and other things in them and they have very little fiber uh, and that can uh, dry out your stools, uh, make you a little constipated. It's a perfect time of year for triphala. Triphala is the Ayurvedic formula uh, uh, for um, con constipation. This time of year, usually a pretty good formula. So, all right, so I've just put the, the spelling of triphala in the chat box there. It's T-R-I-P-H-A-L-A, T-R-I-P-H-A-L-A. LA. You can search for that on the Joyful Belly site. Uh, like I said, it may still be down now. Uh, hopefully it's coming back up. So pants may be tight. Uh, skin feels a little puffy. People may be a little more tired after all those sweets too. And it's hard to wake up feeling fresh after all those sweets. Uh, so those may be some of the things the Kapha folks are feeling. What about the Vata folks? Vata is the dosha of deficiency. And Vata people... Uh, are typically having uh, these kinds of signs and symptoms this time of year. You know, just let's not forget, it's been a stressful uh, month in December, preparing, uh, traveling. Well, you may be off your routine. You, um, you know, you may uh, have been uh, eating different kinds of foods. And, and so that's going to aggravate mobile quality of Vata. Uh, it can be a little rough on the, sy on the sim system especially if you've changed time zones. Uh, so you might be feel out of sorts, a little tired, a little scrambled. You know, for my family, it was a very rough uh, uh, December. 
And even late November, we had a funeral in the family in uh, November. Uh, then we had we traveled for Thanksgiving to my wife's family. Uh, then we uh, we celebrated our anniversary. We had uh, Christmas, and then we had uh, a, co a cousin. Uh, my wife's cousin got married, so we had to attend a wedding. And then we were visiting some folks in my family. Much crazier than our normal holiday season. Uh, so how are you going to deal with that roughness and keep that vata grounded uh, during those time periods? Uh, that's really critical uh, you, you know to uh now that it's all over and you can everyone can settle down you know we have that deep darkness of winter here in the northern hemisphere the quiet time of the season i know even downtown Asheville, uh you know it's no longer the hustle and bustle uh but stores are quiet and we want to take some advantage of that restful time of year to get back on track and uh and rebuild that uh that routine so lots of people are going to be feeling the roughness of that, of being off their routine. The Kafa folks may be feeling the heaviness and sluggishness uh, that comes with uh, all the rich foods that people have been eating. And let's not forget the general seasonal issues that people are facing this time of year. Uh, it's, you know, the, the weather's cold now. <laughs> Funnily enough, it was quite a warm December here uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, and I know some other folks have been see, uh, seeing some record warm temperatures, and uh, and that's a little confusing to the body. But still, general, we're in the cold time of the year, and uh, as medical folks know, with every one degree drop in body temperature, your heart is beating ten beats per minute slower. So what happens is is that in cold weather, you have less circulation, even at the skin capillary beds uh, in the skin are constricting down. Uh, so there's less blood flow through the skin and you might notice your skin's looking a little gray and lifeless and dried out uh, this time of year. And that's all signs of blood stagnation consistent with cold weather outside. Uh, you know, so there's also a darkness, right? In the, uh, uh, again, in the Northern hemisphere, we're seeing much shorter days of sunlight, uh, longer nights and because it's cold, people aren't getting outside as much. And uh, it can be a little gloomy, right? It can be a little bleak, gray, overcast skies throughout January uh, if there's less socializing. And you wanna get all the, reap all the advantages of that, right? Which is hibernating, resting, um, taking a step back and, um, you know, slowing down. That's the season for that, but also uh, for some of those Kafa folks, especially, there can be a gloominess and depression uh, that sets in. Blue Monday, if you've never heard of it, is the third Monday in January. And it's, and it's statistically known as the time of year when most people report uh, uh, more unhappiness or more depression. And uh, that's very interesting. I think that is probably also due to credit card bills being due <laughs> around that time. So people get anxious and a little fearful trying to meet those, um, you know, financial issues that may come after all of the uh, excesses of uh, December. So winter's at its deepest point around then. You might have low vitamin D. And if your vitamin D levels are low, you're going to feel just a little emotionally off. Uh, I notice in my, I've gotten to the point in my body where I can really tell when my vitamin D levels are low. And I just will take one of those little vitamin D uh, tablets, and uh, within an hour, I feel a lot better. Now, you can also overdo vitamin D as well and take too much. You don't just start you know, popping a bunch of vitamin D if you, um, you, know, if you notice uh, some of those seasonal affected disorders, uh, but you know, follow recommended dosage and, the, and, uh, and your doctor's advice. Uh, but for me, very helpful, low vitamin D, also means low immunity, especially for the young folks. Think about babies. Even in the summer, babies aren't outside that much, right? They're protected. Uh, so they may have low vitamin D. And we're, we're careful to make sure that we have a little bit of vitamin D supplement for the wee ones in the family. And you know, like I said, even for myself, if I'm spending uh, uh, too much time drafting uh, lectures like today, <laughs> um, I you know, I might be missing out a little bit of uh, on that sunlight. So if you can, travel uh, to the tropics if, uh, you know, for a week. If you have that luxury uh, to do that, great. 
if you don't, um, just make sure you get outside a little bit in the middle of the day, go for a little walk and get those vitamin D levels up uh, with a supplement if you, if you can. And now it's an interesting thing. Uh, this, we're transitioning right now from the dry cold of Vata season to the wet cold of Kapha season uh, as we move through January. Uh, all season long in the fall, typically known as the drier season as temperatures are dropping. Temperatures are gonna hit their low point uh, statistically around January 15th. And then they're gonna start slowly rising. And right then and there, it starts the wet cold season. February is a wet cold. Uh, November is a dry cold season. And that is a really a shift from Vata aggravation into Kapha aggravation. So we should uh, be aware of that, uh, uh, that shift. So I don't know, is, is some of this sounding familiar to, to folks? Uh, skin drying out from cold weather, some blood stagnation, feeling a little out of sorts from the break in routine, heaviness, puffiness, uh, some tiredness. Uh, you can respond in the chat box on that if you, uh, you know, if that's uh, making some sense for you. And you can also feel free to, um, to, you know, report on some other things that you might be noticing this time of year in your, in your body. And, you know, the more information you give me, the more I can respond to it, even in the Q&A later. So uh, feel free to, to um, you know, to uh, just, you know, put that information in the chat box uh, during the presentation and, uh, and, and, and maybe during and even after I will, um, uh, I will be addressing it. All right, so I've already said it. First thing to rebalance this time of year is your routine. Uh, getting that routine solid, uh, you know, rein it back in, simplify your life. Um, I know t today was my first day back at work, so I was pulled in a few different directions, but purposefully this morning, I trimmed up my to-do list uh, and, you know, I kept it on the real important stuff only uh, because I want to keep life simple because I want to recover a little bit. And of course, uh, halfway through the day, I made myself some simple turmeric tea. You know, turmeric is such a great blood invigorator for this time of year, and it, it warms you up, warms up the skin, uh, get your blood moving, a little bit of a liver tonic as well. And I was just feeling it. After being in that car yesterday, I felt the need for that refreshment. And probably I'm going to go after our call tonight and take a nice hot bath. Hot bath is so great this time of year for boosting that circulation. Um, oh, Diana, uh, she's writing in the chat box here that she's Vata and having difficulty keeping her weight up despite all the richness of the season. Well, Deanna, I want to let you know that this year I cooked uh, a baked for my family and I have so much fun doing this. I mean, like what my, my ideal Christmas, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, after, after I'm done celebrating Christmas on the spiritual level, uh, afterwards, I am, um, my way of showing love to my family is cooking for them. I just loved having that day off to cook for my family. And my favorite dish I made that day, Dana, was an orange pound cake. Now, I put the recipe on Joyful Belly, and you can get, and you can get it. But I'll just mention quickly, why do I mention the, uh, why talk about orange pound cake if you're trying to keep your weight up? Because the orange zest in that pound cake is an aromatic spice, Diana, that helps with your digestion so that a vata person can um, digest all of those heavy ingredients efficiently and absorb them well. So that's what you want uh, when, you know, if you're a vata person and trying to keep your weight up, first of all, you want to make sure you can digest all your food, make sure your stools aren't watery and then you're not losing any fluids or energy out through the stool or even through the urine. Um, so, you know, plug up those leaks and then make sure that you can efficiently digest and absorb those heavier ingredients by putting in those aromatic spices and maybe even other spices. Maybe you'll make a, a cinnamon orange pound cake. Anyway, Diana, you can check out that recipe on Joyful Belly uh, and keep up with those heavy ingredients. You know, you don't need to necessarily cleanse. I'm going to talk to folks about how to do a little mini cleanse this time of year uh, to help you recover. But Diana, that may not be what you need. It may be that you can just go keep, continue right on with those richer ingredients, 
uh, blood, blood invigorating ingredients uh, like molasses and even red meat to keep your strength while we're going through this cold season. Uh, so anyway, thanks for chiming in there, Diana. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so, all right. Uh, so get your routine back online uh, by keeping life simple, trimming a few things off your task list, you know, staying focused on those most important things so you can be extremely effective and, um, uh, but not scattered, right? And then, uh, you know, I, this time of year is the time of year where I love to do those indoor activities, crafting, reading, studying, taking out my flute and playing uh, some hymnal. I just, I love doing that. They're so beautiful. Uh, I, I like listening to... Um, you know, so my, my favorite classical musicians, Bach, although, um, and uh, Mozart, although Mozart's a little, a little crazy for her, uh, for trying to relax. Um, but I just love doing those kind of introspective, more contemplative kind of leisure activities this time of year at night, instead of planning all the exciting, adventurous stuff. Uh, but a nice ho uh, night at home uh, with a little fire in the fireplace or uh, keeping the Christmas tree lit, and then uh, reading some short stories with the kids, and uh, you know those kinds of activities. You know, getting on the onesie pajamas, feeling all nice and uh, you know quiet and comfy, and um, and that quality time with loved ones uh, this time of year is great. Or something special that you like to do on your own uh, can be uh, very restorative this time of year. The winter is it in Chinese medicine, uh, the most yin time of year. So that, um, you know, yin versus yang, yin is that, uh, that more um, uh, heaviness, uh, darkness, nourishing, nurturing, associated with the feminine. Uh, that, uh, so this time of year, that's, that's what I'm thinking, is I'm thinking of being in the home and, um, you know, just nourishing, nurturing, uh, and uh, restoring. Uh, it's a wonderful time of year for that. Not, not starting something new. You know, we have our New Year's resolutions, and, but those, our New Year's resolutions don't have to be new projects or new adventures. They can be very simple, quiet, uh, reflective, and, uh, and even contemplative as we're, and you can even contemplate how you're going to start uh, carrying through some of your New Year's resolutions as we move further and further into the season uh, later on down the line. So yeah, uh, so allow that time for hibernation and restful activities. Uh, get organized, you know, begin uh, going to bed the same time each night again, uh, having your meals at the same time each night. Uh, I, I even love that afternoon nap this time of year. I'm not a COPPA person. COPPA people, they take an afternoon nap, they're sluggish the rest of the day. I'm more Pabata and Pitta. I take that little power nap uh, before, uh, you know, in mid-afternoon. I took a 10-minute power nap before this presentation, and I feel great right now. You know, just that, if you have that opportunity to just slow down, get your adrenals back down. You know, um, uh, it's so important not to get carried away. There's so many different ways that people get carried away. And I always love to discuss this with the virtue of temperance. You know, temperance doesn't just mean abstinence. Uh, from overeating or something like that. But temperance means having a mindset where you don't allow yourself to get carried away without a decision. Now, it's important to be passionate and get carried away a little bit uh, when you decide that. But if it just happens to you all the time, you're burning up your ojas, you're burning up your adrenals, and that's, this is not the season for that. So uh, pay attention. And even ask yourself this question, and, and I'm giving you this on the more like, you know, I raise body, mind, spirit. This is the more mind, spirit kind of thing, right? Uh, uh, ask yourself the question, how do I get carried away in my life? And then figure out how you can temper that. You know, bring it back to, um, you know, to a little bit more holistic, right? What is being carried away it means getting excessively focused on something. Uh, but to temper something means to bring it back to wholeness, right? Look at the situation as a whole. And, uh, and for me, whenever I feel myself get carried away, I immediately bring it back to, um, to 
you know, uh, just stepping back from a second, getting a little bit more of a wider perspective and really reapproaching life in an affectionate, uh, more joyful, cheerful manner. And, um, and ask, and, uh, um, and just, you know, taking, uh, taking a pause. And so that's, that's all can be very helpful to, uh, you know, temp, not get carried away this time of year by, by anything really. All right. So I've talked about hibernating and resting and, uh, and we're really talking from the high level here. Uh, and we'll get down to specifics with food and all these other things as we go through the talk today. Uh, but I want, I want to say that even though I've talked a lot about rest, you do still want to exercise a little bit, especially in the winter because of all the blood stagnation that happens. You know, the earth is hard and solid and frozen this time of year. And it's kind of like the body is too. Uh, cold weather causes poor circulation and, uh, and it causes tension. You might even notice arthritis uh, acting up. Uh, stiffer joints. Uh, and so, you know, a little bit of exercise and that and a hot bath can just warm up your circulation a little bit. Get your heart rate up. Remember to get your heart rate up a little bit each day. Uh, February is heart attack month. Uh, you know, heart attacks really go up then, especially uh, for COPPA folks. August is heart attack month for, for VATA folks. But for the COPPA folks, uh, February is heart attack month. So what you want to do is have that kapha pacifying diet and you know just keep uh you know keep your cardiovascular system healthy throughout winter uh, that doesn't mean more stress it just means getting your heart rate up and uh getting a little exercise in each day so by this time in the season your body has accumulated enough fat to keep itself warm for the winter unless you know unless you're really unless you're underweight and struggling to keep your weight up um, but for most folks, if you're not struggling with that issue, your body has thickened up a, the, uh, the, uh, a nice fat layer in your skin that's keeping you insulated. And so, uh, it, in fact, your body was working really hard to build that layer of fat all fall, all, all during autumn. And that's why, uh, Thanksgiving is such a heavy meal, right? That's why we were eating all those treats and sweets and things like that. But now you're done with that. In fact, you might even notice your body telling you this already. You might even notice that your appetite is not as strong as it was a month ago. I notice it in my body, and this really comes to a head around February where people lose their appetite altogether for about two weeks. Don't be alarmed when that happens. That is, your, that is a, such a great thing. And so your body has realized that you've built your enough winter fat to keep you warm, and now, now all of a sudden the temperature is going to start getting hotter and hotter and your body's going to need to shed that fat. So your appetite is going to go down. Uh, don't be alarmed. Like I said, don't be alarmed by that. It means your body's working correctly. So this time of year now, I'll eat only when you're full, when you, um, uh, you know, don't eat when you are full and eat only when you are hungry. Uh, overeating is one of the worst things that you can do this time of year. Now that, you know, December was fine, but we're not in December anymore. Now we're in January. Follow your appetite this time of year. It was hard to avoid overeating in the holiday season, but in January and February, it's not as hard. Uh, you know, we're not celebrating as much. Intermittent fasting is a great way to cleanse and recover after the holidays. You know, if I just had a rich meal last night, like the day after Thanksgiving, I didn't make cook a big breakfast for myself the day after Thanksgiving. I had my heavy meal last night. I might even decide to skip breakfast the next morning. And, uh, and that's okay, especially if your cough is aggravated, just skip breakfast if you're not hungry the next morning. Don't force yourself to eat breakfast if you don't have an appetite in the morning. Have yourself a nice cup of digestive tea which can be, in, you know, a ginger tea. And that, uh, and that will uh, get you going in the morning. Uh, or uh, uh, we have on Joyful Belly a really great lemon weight loss tea that's very spicy and fiery for the cold days of winter. will really get you moving, refresh your body. Um, and, uh, and so if you're not feeling uh, hungry in the morning, have that lemon weight loss tea. Just Google it on Joyful Belly. Hopefully the site will be back up uh, soon. I know there was that issue earlier. I mentioned it already. So, 
Uh, if you can't <laughs> get access to it, just go access it tomorrow. Um, anyway, that lemon weight loss tea, write it down uh, so you don't forget it, is a great refreshing tea for the next morning. And fire cider, have you ever heard of that? Uh, fire cider is also on the Joyful Belly website. Uh, you can make yourself some fire cider and a big jar of it and have a cup of it in the morning. And that's really going to rev up your system, refresh you, revitalize you. Uh, and during this heavy, cold season, right? What do you want? Hot and spicy when that, in that kind of season. So that you can, you can have that instead of breakfast if you don't have an appetite in the morning. Now, if you're a vata person and don't have an appetite, then, you know, uh, and, it's, and it's not due to, you know, and you didn't have a rich meal last night, but you still don't have an appetite in the morning. Well, that's a bit different problem. So if you're vata and have a low appetite, then you have those digestive teas so that you can digest a better meal, uh, a bigger meal. In fact, for the vata folks, I'll tell you, make yourself a spicy tea, put a little salt in it, squirt a little lime in it, and have that a, 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 a warm, salty, sour, spicy tea about an hour before breakfast at least, uh, so that you're very well hydrated. And, uh, and that will help you get an appetite on time. And this is, again, only for the vata deficient folks. If you don't have an appetite because you uh, were having lots of rich food the night before, okay, it's very okay to skip breakfast. So uh, now uh, Jessie's telling me she's Vata Pitta and she tries to only eat between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Well, uh, Vata Pitta Vita people don't need to be so regimented, uh, Jessie. You can um, have meals when you're hungry. Uh, it's Kapha people that need to be a little bit more careful about when they eat. Uh, but if you're not hungry by 6 p.m., you make molasses milk with clove and cardamom. Now that sounds delicious. Sounds like a great tea. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call that an Agni building tea because milk itself is very nourishing and that might undermine your appetite a little bit. Uh, so, you know, a spicy tea would probably ignite your digestion, ignite your Agni more than that. And you can have that molasses milk with clove and cardamom even before bed as like an extra special nourishing thing. Now, molasses and cloves might aggravate your pits a little bit, uh, but you can... Um, Jesse, you can look at the symptoms of pit aggravation and decide that for yourself, you know, because everyone's body is just a little bit different. But if you are noticing you're irritated or a little too hot uh, or a little, you're emotionally intense or something like that, then you might want to back off on that molasses just a little bit. Uh, but overall, Jesse, it's great. And if it works for you, then uh, then wonderful, right? There's no don't, don't fix what isn't broken if it's working for you, okay? Uh, yeah. So, you know, and maybe you can't feel the changes in your appetite yet. I've said before that I can already feel the changes in your appetite. Uh, maybe you don't feel those changes yet. Maybe you're still developing body awareness. And in our certification courses, that's what we go really deep into. We go in deep into developing your body awareness, into your awareness of your appetite and awareness of specific cravings and how to even read specific cravings so that you know how to read your body and what your body's trying to tell you and what's happening and can respond to it in, in a great way. Um, in fact, a lot of the stuff that we are talking about right now is the kind of stuff that we study at the school in both of our certification courses. You know, it's life-changing knowledge of your body that, that's very practical and at-home methods uh, to make sure that you are feeling great and know how to respond to the ups and downs that uh, are going on in your body and in your life too. And uh, not only, of course, in our certification course, is not only something for you to do, but something that you learn how to communicate to your community and, uh, and to be a healer for the people you love and, uh, and for your clients, perhaps, if, you're, if you want to do it professionally. Uh, so it really enhances your quality of life. And, um, and it's a lot of fun, uh, you know, to learn too. So, uh, so, and it's challenging, you know, our courses are also really challenging, uh, too. And, 
uh, and I think that's really exciting opportunity. So Felicia asks, if, is ashwagandha a powder good to take in January to balance vata? Yes, for balancing vata, is there a better season to take ashwagandha? I really think uh, ashwagandha is a great herb for ashwa, uh, excuse me, ashwagandha is a great herb for vata. And really from, uh, from August uh, through end of January, even, you know, for some vatas all year, but if you're, but from, from August through January is all a great time to take ashwagandha. Now for some folks that are vata pitta, August and September are still too hot for them to take ashwagandha. But I even know a lot of kaphas have a, uh, uh, do great with ashwagandha. I think ashwagandha is great for vata and kapha. It's just sometimes a little bit pitta aggravating. So Felicia, important thing when you're taking an herb is um, is how ask yourself the question: How does it make you feel? You know, does it make you feel good, or do you just feel nothing at all, or does it make you feel worse? Because even if a textbook says an herb is good for me, if I take it and I don't feel a difference, I stop taking it. If I take the herb and it makes me feel worse, I definitely stop taking it. All right, great. So uh, let's see here. All right, so uh, we talked a little bit about intermittent fasting for some of the kapha folks. We talked about some of the symptoms that both kapha individuals and bot individuals might be feeling. We talked about reestablishing the routine and taking advantage of that restorative hibernating time of year. Uh, what about a little mini cleanse? I, in fact, if it was, you know, Monday is such a great day to start a cleanse, right? I just think the weekend, is over, all the socializing is over. Monday is always my cleanse day. And you can even right now um, do a one to three day cleanse. You don't know, don't, it doesn't have to be a very strict cleanse. This is winter after all, right? You can't survive on salad this time of year. Uh, but you can do a mini cleanse with some light, easy to digest foods. My wife made a nice kitchery for lunch today uh, and uh, and I was very excited to have it. And then I put, I just, I just took my lemon zester out and I put a bunch of lemon zest on it, put a bunch of chopped up rosemary on it and, uh, and even some cinnamon. And I just had a nice spicy light kitchery. You know, what a great uh, tool to recover from a long car ride yesterday. And kitchery, we have a ton of kitchery recipes on Joyful Belly, one for each dosha. Um, a few other ones which are especially tailored to the uh, American kitchen, or if you don't have those Indian spices, try the American kitchery recipe on Joyful Belly. We have a bunch of kitchery recipes, so check them out. Uh, one of my, another one of my favorites, and I'm putting these in the chat box so you know how to spell them, but we have a, uh, a sweet potato with kale and black bean bowl. Uh, it's the recipe on JB that is uh, very restorative. Sweet potatoes and potatoes, there couldn't be any, couldn't be, couldn't be vegetables that are more different from each other. Potatoes have a high glycemic index, lots of calories, make you feel heavy, put you to sleep. Sweet potatoes are very light. I recommend sweet potatoes as a weight loss food for many of my clients. Um, it's vata pitta and kapha pacifying, just because it is just so much lighter than a regular potato. And you put those, but they're still satisfying. It's awesome. So nice uh, bowl of black beans, so, nice soft sweet potatoes with some kale in there. That's going to be a cleansing recipe. How about some ginger carrot soup? Ginger carrot soup is a really great recipe on Joyful Belly. It's so simple. Anyone can make it. Uh, all the Joyful Belly recipes are pretty simple. In fact, that's one of the things that we have, uh, have been since day one is we were all about the simple recipes that everyone can make but are are delicious. And 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 truly I tell you that that's what I believe is the mark of a great chef is that they can take a few simple ingredients and turn it into something amazing. And that's what we try to do on Joyful Bell. Hopefully you will think it's amazing. Um, I know I enjoy those recipes, but it's for you to decide whether those recipes are tasty to you. Um, anyway, another uh, great cleansing food, you can have this for breakfast, is grapefruit, where you sprinkle a little bit of honey and cardamom on it. Honey is a weight loss uh, sweetener. 
Honey is not like other sweeteners. It's a kapha pacifying sweetener and uh, actually improves fat metabolism. Cardamom is a great digestive. And uh, so if you're not that hungry in the morning, but you want to have a little something in your stomach, have that sour, bitter grapefruit with a little honey and cardamom on it, and it'll help you to feel great. So, you know, like I said, don't overdo it on cleansing. It's still the middle of winter, but you can do a light mini cleanse for one to three days this time of year. There is no one size fits all cleanse. I uh, just want to mention that there's no one size fits all cleanse. So uh, a little bit of professional training is required before you can know how to tailor a cleanse to your individual body. So if you're doing a light gentle cleanse, fine, no problem. But if you're going to do something that's a little bit more intense, you definitely want to, um, you know, we teach that in our courses and so that you know, you know how to answer that question. Um, and you can also make an appointment with a, an Ayurvedic practitioner. Uh, you know, do a, schedule a consultation with me. I'll happy to share with you specific things for your body uh, that go beyond just the general paradigm. All right, more tips for your kapha pacifying diet. If you have that heaviness, if you have that sluggishness, you're going to focus on lighter, hot, sharp, penetrating foods. Uh, so uh, let's take a look here at something that's sharp and penetrating. Uh, pickles, uh, a garlic pickle this time of year. Wow. You know, this pickled garlic recipe on Joyful Belly, super sharp, super penetrating, aromatic, going to open up your pores, get that blood moving. I love pickled garlic this time of year. And this time of year, I start to crave those pickles in general. Sour taste, kimchi, sauerkraut, fermented beets. Even a little uh, shot glass of wine. You know, I don't take the whole wine glass. You don't need that much. Uh, wine is a great medicine for this time of year, but you don't need a whole glass of it. A shot glass of wine uh, will fire up your digestion, will dilate your blood vessels, which gets the blood flowing in your skin and um, really revitalize the skin. Sour taste in general, whether it's wine or kimchi or sauerkraut, just encourages a lot of secretions in your body. And that's what you want to do is get those fluids moving this time of year. So sour taste and then the fire of wine is great. Or try that fire cider. Uh, any of these ferments this time of year, this is where it's at. Think about our ancestors. Didn't have refrigerators. Uh, our ancestors, um, you know, couldn't import food from Chile uh, to... Uh, you know, they had to uh, preserve stuff. So this time of year, the cupboard was starting to get a little bare and people were eating fermented foods this time of year. So that's what your body's used to. And just remember those grapefruits, those vinegars, um, the kimchi, sauerkraut, all that kind of stuff is going to be great for this time of year, not just for blood stagnation, but also to cleanse your liver. That's another thing we teach our students step-by-step -step in our certification courses. It's how to cleanse your liver. And also how to build your liver. You know, it's such a fad to only cleanse the liver, but you also have to build the liver and nourish your liver. So how do you do that? Uh, you know, that's, so you have to get behind the fad. It's not just about cleansing, but also about building. This time of year, however, it is a little more about cleansing. And, uh, and those sours can really help out. Uh, so what about some lighter foods like beans and greens? That's on my, my, my mantra for... Uh, late winter and early spring on those days when you want something a little lighter, beans and greens. You know, the black bean with kale, and I threw some sweet potatoes in before. Perfect example of that. So legumes have the fiber to cleanse your colon, and they also reduce cholesterol uh, because fiber reduces cholesterol in general. And, uh, and that also gives you a little liver cleanse. All beans can do all those things. And your green veggies are bitters. And bitters cleanse your system. Bitters purge bile and stimulates your liver to secrete all the, the blood toxins out of, your, out of your system. So bitters uh, basically cleanse your blood, not just your liver. They're called alteratives because they balance blood chemistry. I just love that. When my body feels really off, and I, uh, and I have some uh, green veggies, like uh, just some kale or something like that. 
a little teaspoon of vinegar really recalibrates the system. So beans and greens, great way to feed yourself this time of year and pickles, uh, all different kinds of pickles, a little shot glass of wine. Uh, choose lighter whole grains this time of year. So, okay, wheat was fine for November when you're trying to build your body, but now shift over to corn, millet, quinoa, amaranth. And millet, quinoa, and amaranth especially are, are especially much lighter. I know quinoa is so expensive now. I rarely recommend quinoa anymore just because it's so pricey. But one day uh, there'll be more quinoa farms and the price of quinoa will go back down and we'll all be able to uh, you know, use it as a winter grain. But if you, uh, if you can afford it, quinoa is still a great grain. <clears throat> all right, so you know, uh, as part of the hot and sharp foods, spice up your food. This time of year is a great time of year for a spicy food. In fact, by March, my family and I were going out for Mexican food a lot. Why? Because it's spicy. And, uh, and a little bit lighter than northern cuisine. You know, we're not having the New England clam chowder anymore uh, in, in by March. So even this time of year, this week, a cleansing week. How about basil? You know, it doesn't have to be Indian spices. Basil is such an aromatic hot spice. It's great. Or cinnamon or fennel, garlic, you know, some uh, um, raw garlic. I love going into the, um, we had this, there was this Middle Eastern restaurant when I lived in Boston, and they would make this whipped garlic. Man, that was, that's great for winter. S spicy, sharp, intense. Red pepper, those red pepper flakes that they have at the pizza restaurant. Have the red pepper, not the pizza, right? That rose red pepper flakes are will really heat things up. All spices papa, pacify kapha, and they help to fire up your digestion and break up congestion. So ginger, black pepper, etc. We go into depth into the medicinal uses of herbs and spices in our certification courses. So you know our students just watch their spice cabinet transform into a med medicine cabinet. So great to talk about the nuances and differences between ginger, black pepper, cardamom, so you know exactly what your body needs. I talked about a hot bath. You know, it's just such a great way to get your circulation up. Your people's skin is looking lifeless, cold, and dry. Oh, yeah. Here's, I'm looking at the chat box, and Nicole is, is chiming in. She's like, uh, I'm dealing with heartburn consistently following the holidays, so no more spices for her. All right, Nicole, so um, there are two different kinds of acid reflux. Some people get acid reflux because their digestion um, is actually low in acid and it causes the food to sit and churn for too long. And spices usually help those people. But other people who have like a hiatal hernia or hyperacidity, the spices make it worse. Or if your liver is a little congested, the spices will make it worse. So you got... Um, a, the actually, the, the most common type of acid reflux is the low acid type. Uh, so for most people, spices uh, can even, uh, if, you know, well, I should qualify this. It'll be like something more like mint or cardamom can help their acid reflux. Um, and for others, a little bit of lemon uh, can help uh, counteract. It's a funny thing because lemons are acidic, but they actually end up reducing acid in the stomach. Uh, don't ask me all the science behind that, but Nicole, that may work for you. And you're, you're, you're saying that you are more pitta. So yeah, so Nicole, that's the great thing uh, that your example, it's such a great thing that you brought up this example because everyone has to approach Ayurveda individually. Don't just follow a textbook, but be aware of your body and your body will tell you if something's working. You know, if I give you 10 recommendations tonight, for different things to try to balance your doshas, only three of them, three of them may work, right? But that's great. That's a, that's a great hit rate. Uh, you know, the other uh, three of them may have no effect on you and three of them may make you feel worse and three of them make you feel better. Well, it's, that's much better. There's thousands of different options out there. If you get three out of 10, wow, that's just simplified your life and your search process. Uh, down a lot. So 
um, you know, this is the body. It's more complicated. It's not just a math equation. So we have to approach it individually. Um, and you have to, you know, just be aware of what's going on in your body and you will succeed. Okay, great. Lemon and lime, pretty close. Uh, so you can do, you can substitute one for the other. And, uh, and recommendations to eat with a non-alcoholic fatty liver. Yeah, so uh, for that, it's going to be a little bit more of the kapha pacifying. What's your, did you know your doshas, Doris? Are you more kapha? Uh, 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 or when you're more vata. Okay. So that's going to be a little more specific, you know, on how you're dealing with that. I pr Doris, for you, I need to know more information about your, your body and your system because fatty liver is typically associated with kapha. And if that's not the cause for you, you're not, you're not just fitting into the, um, you know, the, the basic formula. So I have to figure out really a little bit more what's going on, Doris. I wish, I wish I could do more. It's caused by a sedentary lifestyle. Well, this is the, fu this is the funny thing. It's, in a way, it's like each of us can answer our own uh, question on some level. Like back in the brain somewhere, we know what the ultimate cause is. So now, Doris, my, uh, in this case, since you know the cause already, um, I would then, I, then I would have to, you know, if this was a consultation setting, I'd be asking you, well, why do you have a sedentary lifestyle? And why can't you exercise? Are there exercise options that you could do despite some of the external circumstances that you're dealing with? That would be my direction to ask about that. And then also there are other ways to mimic exercise. Spicy uh, foods can uh, can help move blood. There's other blood movers, uh, even breathing exercises, other things that can get your heart rate up uh, that will provide some of the benefits of exercise and may may or uh, may not help with that. So you're already eating the spicy food. Well, yeah. So Doris, I would have to look at your case in a much more individual manner than I could accomplish on a call like tonight. So yeah, I talked about the hot bath, skin looking lifeless cold, dry weather, um, you know, if you take a nice hot bath, your skin will be pink and flushed and moisturized and, uh, and revitalized. So kapha people especially, but even, if, even your va the vata folks should be taking a hot bath at least once a week. And in those kapha folks, rub that massa kapha massage oil on your body before your hot bath. It's going to really fire you up. You know, my wife, she's more kapha. She says that nothing really pacifies her kapha as great as the kapha massage oil. It's such an excellent way to get that spark for kapha people to get reinvigorated. It's awesome. Um, so check that out. Uh, it's, you can find it on Joyful Belly. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, re really invigorating. Uh, you can also take things up a notch by putting some baking soda and ginger in your bath. Coconut oil is not recommended for kapha. Coconut oil is a cold oil I, um, and a heavy oil. It's going to make you feel more stagnant. Uh, coconut oil is for vata folks. Uh, so just want to mention that because I saw someone commenting in the chat one, chat box there. Uh, I don't know if you're kapha and it works for you, great. But generally, co uh, coconut oil uh, is too heavy for kapha and too cold for kapha. Anyway, uh, so putting that baking soda ginger bath, that formula is on Joyful Belly. Uh, so you can uh, know what the instructions are of how to put baking soda and ginger in your bath. And you'll feel totally refreshed and revitalized from that. It's like going to a spa or a sauna. All right, so we've talked about spicy foods. We've talked about cleansing. Uh, now, I just want to remember, uh, I want to remi remind everyone, it's still winter. So even though you can, you can do a mini cleanse for a few days, um, those Vata people have to be real careful not to overdo it. Uh, Vata people still need your blood building food this time of year. Red meat, or if you're a vegetarian, molasses, or other iron building things to help invigorate and build your blood. Vata people will still need the heavy foods to weather the cold winter.
Uh, but if your kapha gets aggravated, you can always pull things uh, back into balance uh, through some of the techniques we talked about today. Uh, today's program was sponsored by the Mastering Ayurvedic Digestion Diet and uh, Mastering Ayurvedic Digestion and Nutrition Certification Program. It's a 500-hour, one-year program. Challenging, exciting. Um, you know, a paradigm shift for your body and uh, for the people in your life. And uh, I want to thank everybody for taking care of your body by attending tonight's call and uh, taking an interest in your body, taking an interest in your community. We all know that once we learn um, healthy things, what do we do? We share them with others, right? Uh, so I want to thank you uh, for your interest in health and healing your communities and for choosing Ayurveda and most of all for choosing Joyful Belly. And I want to wish all of you a very happy new year.